your main one. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be a teacher. <laughs> and that's that's your main one. And then there's a moon sign, and that one like is kind of also yours, just not quite as strong. But it's on the inner self. It's your mind and your emotions, how they function. But your sun sign's like your willpower and your ego. And it's what's signed on in your chart the most, but you have more in your chart. And your moon sign... Okay, here we go. Your moon sign is also, um, like, the mother. How she treats... There's just, like, a few things I want to say. Your sun is in Cancer. Your moon is in Capricorn, so you had to grow up fast. You probably bought your own car or you're going to. Um, your Mercury is in Cancer, so you put a voice into emotions, and you'll be like Mother Nursing Sounding, and your Venus is in Leo. Venus is how what you how you act in relationships and how, what you're looking for in others, like your Venus is in Leo. The drama, you know, the creative project, the spotlight. And um, you want to create a story, and you're very generous-hearted with your um, with your money and stuff, and you could probably, like, make mixtapes with music or something on it because of that. I don't know. <laughs> Your Mars is in Cancer, that's your sexual expression and how you get mad, and it's your willpower as well, it's like how you react, and yours is in Cancer, so it's kind of a weak willpower thing, <laughs> can't give up your sweets and stuff like that, or whatever, you know what I mean, and, um, it's emotional, so, um, and you'd rather just cuddle than, you know, everything. Your Jupiter's in Gemini, which means you're a very good communicator, and if you aim at it, you could be a public speaker, and you could be a writer, you could be, you know what I mean, you're really good with your hands, and expressing multiple personalities. And um, your Saturn's in Taurus, this means your father, when he dealt with you and uh, when you were like in a bad mood or something, he's like, here's some food and here's some money. I just got to go or something. And so he spoiled you with money anytime and he could take it away from you as well. Like you might, you might have learned how to be financially secure through him. He might have had no possessions. Maybe he was kind of homeless or something and you had to learn through that through you and you had to be homeless. You had, had a hard time getting food and stuff. And possessions, like comfort things, like your things, they may be given to you and taken away from you, like a business that he might have set you up with, you could work for him. And if you were just, like, uncompromisable with his fake plan or something, then he would take it away from you. You could be offered this as your own gift at financial security, but it's going to be hard for you for the rest of your life until you learn how to make money honestly on your own, somehow be financially secure somehow, even with a bigger business, something beautiful, you know, could get given to you and take it away, like a business. What do you think about that? That's probably... <laughs> That's probably pretty accurate. Not like so much with the money, but with the things more, yeah. So he said that um, one of these signs means that my dad, your uncle, said like he'll, he gives me lots of things and he's very nice, but he also always says, I can take that back if you don't do what I want. So you know how, like Uncle Rick bought my car. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And he always will tell me, I bought that car for you. I can take it back from you if I am trying to go somewhere that he doesn't want me to. So he wow. says that that's how my dad asks. With your possession. Mm -hmm. Okay, and your moon's in Capricorn, so you just decided to grow up on your own anyways, right? Like, you started a job first or something like that? Yeah, kind of. In school, I don't know, something. <laughs> Uranus is in Aquarius. Your Neptune's in Aquarius with your friends. You like to on camera with your friends. Your Pluto's in Sagittarius. You like to isolate yourself by studying and le le higher learning things, probably, and going on adventures and gambling with life or something, and just higher knowledge. Your Lilith is in Capricorn. People don't want to see you grow up by the way and be like everybody's father and everybody's boss, but you do it anyways if you're proud of it. You get things done. That's how you get things done. It's very harder for you. It's discipline and focus. And then your North Nod is in Cancer. That's what you lack. You're already a Cancer, so you came here to learn everything from Cancer. So everybody that you see who's a Cancer is probably something you can learn from and that you just never knew about. You're just like, I want to be kind of like them, but not, I don't want to just have to be them, but you are now. <laughs> be a mother, be a mom, and have a home is your purpose. And what you lack to, like, you like your own home. Either way, you're, you got so much life to live, to find that own home, to be a mother and nursing person. And you let go of all that hard work you've already learned that you teach everyone else, like being Capricorn. Um, you know what I mean? Something like that. I don't know where your asteroids are. Let's see how you heal yourself and heal other people. See, all of this information is from the stars and everything that you've ever Yeah, and believe this or not, like, um, Egyptians never had to have, never had these computers or phones to look them up. They just used it by eyes and heart alone, and they knew all this crap. Yeah, like, this is, like, a really old practice. Oh, my goodness. And they used to just really just look at the stars. This is, like, the of the future and stuff in That's stars. Like, yeah, like, like, each sign is actually in the stars, too. You can see them. Wow. Like, the cancer and stuff. There's, yeah. There's a constellation of it. With the telescope. But now, satellites are taking pictures of it every, every single day in history, and this is what I can find out now. Yeah. Like, when you were born and stuff, and what your astrological makeup 
was when you were born and created in this world of your own universe, your, your own universe this is your individual chart, no one else lives there but you, but it just happens to have a lot of everyone else's signs in it, <laughs> the placements. Now since we know your time of birth, we can go more in depth. <laughs> yeah. We're getting more information about you. Yes, so that was yours. This is your birth chart. You are a Sun and Pisces, and you're a Virgo rising, so it's polarity. When you come off it as yourself, you come off differently, and you'll look a more like a Virgo, but you, I guess you have a Pisces. So you, it's a polarity you, like, and you keep on, you, you, you attract all these people in their seventh house of Pisces uh, that are like suicidal, sweet, depressing, and like just delusional and spiritual, but secretly you're like them. You'll see them all different. You're like, I'm nothing like that. I'm nothing like a Pisces. But you attract all the people who are like Pisces. And, um, not funny. And, um, your third house is in Scorpio, how you think and communicate. Um, okay. You talk more uh, in the public's eye than you do at home. You're more of a study person at home. Your fourth house is in Sagittarius. Your mother probably uh, moved you around and was very philosophical. And her moon is, your moon is in Cancer, which means your mom's a mothering, nourishing mother. She's a good mom. And it's in the 11th house. So she might either be your friend or she might be kind of prejudiced, racist, or be like, don't wear that. Don't be weird. Don't cut your hair. Don't not be... Um, different. Don't be yourself. You know, either rebel against them. Become yourself just like Saturn and Aquarius. Your dad's the same way. He was probably either your friend or he was very like, I'm going to put you in boot camp if you grow your hair out like that. If you look like a hippie, you know. <laughs> and so, you had a challenge with that. Also, astrology. It could it could be give you the gift of knowing everything a Aquarius knows. Astrology, because you have this is, Saturn is restrictions, life lessons, restrictions every day of your life. It's in the sign of Aquarius, like friends will be given to you and taken away from you because of this. And um, Aquar knowledge can be given to you and taken away from you, like make, get Alzheimer's. That's like every Aquarius' nightmare is to get Alzheimer's, not to remember all the things that they gathered and known. And this is going to make you either persistent, friendly, and know about how to be a true friend, or you know, you just be like this douchebag person that people are trying to challenge you to be, and you're not going to be that because you're going to be different outside of that nonsense because you're futuristic more than these other people that you're challenged with that just have in your life and your mercury is an Aries so you just think quick say things while thinking maybe you know aggressively your Venus is in Aquarius you're looking for a friend in a relationship and you are a friend in this relationship your Mars is in Aquarius you just when you get mad you you force you put all your energy into staying friends with somebody forever and then like you get mad like um you treat them with their own medicine. Like if someone did something to you, you wouldn't do that to them or some bull crap. Like the whole thing with that. And then your Jupiter is in Virgo, so you can live to your own abundance. If you point at like being a farmer or something, you can be a farmer and like just accountant, day-to-day -day routines and stuff. Your Lilith is in Aquarius. That means you have multiple orgasms. You go outside the lines and sex. <laughs> it means you just rebel. And once you regenerate, you um, do it quick over and over and over. And also, you get this unearned attention. People walk on eggshells around you well because it's in the Lilith in the fifth house, like at parties and stuff. They, they just go walk on lava just to come to you to uh, treat you, whatever. And you could give them the light and take it away from them and punish them. And you like probably doing that. And people don't want to see that ego just as the person that you are. You are, anyways, you become proud of it, kind of thing. Because Lilith is in the fifth house that rules the ego, and Lilith and Aquarius rules the ego as well. And this house rules relationship with children, and it also remains the reproduction system. It's like the sperm symbol of Leo, the narcissist. Like, people think you're a narcissist, they don't want to see you be a narcissist. Hmm. You do it anyways. <laughs> Polarity of that. And the house of creativity. And you come off as a critical person first off, because you're Virgo rising, which is the base, and it's how you acquaint people with. And, like, you know what I mean? But secretly, you're the silly or Pisces self, and all the people that you're... And also, your fifth house is in Capricorn. That means you feel weird about having fun. So you probably, like, drink on just the weekends or something. Mm -hmm. Just no. That's good not, not to drink. Not Don't ever drink. But it means that you rather work than play. And you feel weird about having fun or something. But then again, you rebel to be this and have the fun anyways. But in a serious way, in, in groups and stuff, I have no clue. In your career, your fifth house is very serious. Like, your heart's very serious or something in rebellious. Who knows? That's just what I'm saying. And then, 
Sixth house, day to day, you're everyone's friend every day. You want to know everything every day. Your eighth house is an Aries. You might spend things too fast, spend other people's money too fast, and always care about yourself. <laughs> and you might die with a head on collision or something terrible. It says that in, my, in the birth chart. Thing? That's what your eighth house in Aries is. Hmm. Eighth house is death, sex, and transformation. So you're probably good at quickies too. But you have multiple orgasms because the Lola in the fifth house of Aquarius. Everyone has that. It's just that's your sexual arrogance. And, how you rebel against people that don't want to see you like this because it's like Adam and Eve, but Adam and Lilith, and, uh, and Lilith who's like, screw you, Adam, rip, why don't you cut out your own rib cage and do your own things instead of making me be a slave to it? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So Eve was just a submissive girl who's just do whatever Adam says, but Lilith was like, not. So you would act like the Aquarius and that, and be like, I'm gonna act like my dad, and you're mad about it, or because it might be Saturn or Aquarius, or mm -hmm. both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So your 10th house is in Gemini, so your multiple dimensional uh, personalities come out in the public's eye and how you advertise yourself with your hands and being a vocal speaker, uh, public speaker or whatever. And um, your 12th house is Leo, you get all this sudden attention with your insecurities and uh, you put light to other people's insecurities too. Ah, uh, your love. So you're, every, saying... you're everyone's mother in, your, in the social media and your friendships because it's cancer. You're ever, everyone comes to cancer. Well, I don't know, what do you mean? <laughs> And you have secret neighbor relationships, secret sex relationships with your neighbors and your siblings, because it's in the third house, Pluto, isolation, um, and secret sex in Scorpio. <laughs> third house, and um, writing about the stories and stuff you could be doing. What you lack is one um, a home and a family and you came here to be that and have a home and a family and travel and also um <laughs> like that knowledge and and, and being and, and being and being um wow i don't know what that is oh having all this hard work discipline being a father and you already learned how to be the having you already learned about having a home and being a mother you know in prison or whatever because cancer is what you already accomplished and you teach that to the world how to be a mother and that you're not here to be a father figure some bullshit and authoritative and stuff and have a career as your purpose i don't it's know saying that that's what i need to do now. hard work yeah and like yeah the, i don't okay. know just those are two things and you want for people that are capricorns and want to add that to your personality it doesn't mean you want to be a capricorn be serious take every word at value all day and be like it's a bitch and be like no you don't got me a bitch you know what i mean and be like you listen to me i am in the court of my own law, Capricorn crap, because I take every word at value, and like every word seriously, like it's not just taking a joke. <laughs> I don't know, that's how I see it. <laughs> and then, this is, I'm gonna see how the, your asteroids are, this, um, hopefully I find them, because asteroids are the best. Mm -mm 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 -mm. See, rest is how you heal yourself, like, what you need to work well, we work on every time, like you accomplish being it, and then it breaks like an unwanted healing thing, you know, like it cuts back again, and you have to heal it again, blah, 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 I don't know, and your crown is how you heal other people, other people come to you to be healed as, and I'm trying to find that, uh, cryon, it looks like a key, um, I can't find it, so, this sucks, and it's not on this website, it doesn't show you on this one, but yeah, there you go, see, Careful of head on collisions and driving and stuff. Roger that. Roger that. <laughs> That's so funny. Thank you ever so kindly. I both got Gemini rising, so I talk really, really fast. But with you, you have Mercury and Taurus and Lee, third house Leo. We both have third house Leo. That's the hands and how we communicate. Mercury is too. You communicate with a beautiful voice with Mercury, Taurus. Your third house is Leo, like mine. <laughs> and um, that's cool. Your ninth house is an Aquarius, which means when you go to bed, you're all friendly and excited and want to learn more and know more. And you, you are anxious before you go to bed, obviously, or some bullshit. And then when you wake up, you become, let's express ourselves. <laughs> let's. Be proud of how we communicate on our own. Let's um, do something to be proud of while we communicate. Okay, your moon is in Cancer, so you had a mother and you nourish your mother. But then again, 
Your Saturn is in Libra, which means your father was fake and hypocritical. And you are lucky with being married. And if you point at anybody, you can marry them because they're Jupiter. No, if your Jupiter was there, but no, you have Saturn and Libra. So you'll have opportunities to get married and then you'll have it taken away from you. You know what I'm saying? How many times are you getting married yet? Why do you want to be married? That's a waste of money. That's some of that's bullshit. Fuck that. Um, but it's a relationship either way that you're bonding with. Because it's Libra. You might have kidney problems because of Saturn. Do you have any kidney problems? <laughs> no, not me. Good. Your Saturn is in Libra, like I said. And it's in the fucking fifth house, which means you feel weird about having fun, but you're always having fun. You're a lot of fun. And, um, yes. Um, you have third, fourth, fifth house Libra. That's how your heart is. You're, you know what's really cool? You have Venus and Cancer, and it's in the first house, Gem Gemini. So you show your emotions outward. Like, your, your Venus is in Cancer, which means you welcome everyone in with um, sweets and mothering nourishing, emotionally nourishment in, in the home or whatever. And you want your mother's approval for your relationship, and you probably stir away if they don't get your mother's approval or something, and you would like them to, well, anybody would like their mother's approval more than anything, but they don't need to do that because they're the mother in business. But still, as a Venus in Cancer, this might be more of you or something. You call that the mother goes to you. I've always tried to get my mother to approve of what I think. Yeah. But she won't. So that would be that. She never approved of me as a mother does. Mom might. So she tried to make you go into sports and stuff because her, your mood, and she was aggressive with you. And she helped you learn how to survive, though. And well, she didn't try to make me go into sports. Okay, well, I'm fucked up. Moon in the Aries rising. She just was she a mechanic? Down me. Oh, she did. Oh, she was a two face, but she allowed you to stay there all you wanted, or did she ever kick you out? Oh, she kicked me out when I was six. Uh, at the age of thirteen. No. I was in a tree at that time. I was oh, homeless yeah. most of my life, thanks to her. Holy shit. Your moon is not in Pisces or in the 12th house. And those are the main places where you might have those, those problems you would have to go through. Like, um, foster care and stuff in the 12th house. But no, you don't have that. I don't know if you have anything in your 12th. Your son signs in the 12th house, so that's like kind of like your father as well, sort of. But you're talking about your mother. And it's in Taurus in your 12th house. And your Mercury is there. With, that means uh, financial security. Your Mercury, but my financial security for some reason it'll go in retrograde in, in Taurus. That's the worst place ever because it has to deal with your finances and relationships with your ties, with relationships and your money, See, with whoever you have a relationship with that has your money and owes you money, whatever, and just wants to be in your friendship. And that's when that goes retrograde, they'll take it away from you then because it's a lie. Mercury's a liar. I don't know, Mercury retrograde is horrible things when you're around people in relationships, they got you out like that one chick that I told you, my ex-best friend from the convenience store he was asking about, and she's a Scorpio, and he's a Scorpio. I think he's lying, I think he's really a Pisces. <laughs> and he just wants to see me as a Scorpio, and I write. Because I've known him before, I don't remember. I didn't even ask, he just tells me, told me. See, I, my I, father, I did ask. Yeah? My father left me once. To die. To die. What? To die? He died. He died? That's how he left me. My mother has left me quite a bit. So now she threw me out when I was six and made me live in the tree until I was 13. Oh. So see if my father would have been there, shit probably would have been better. Because she thought the spirit of your father would be there? No, he was actually neglecting him because her father died, her boyfriend, the husband died. Well, she didn't want to remember it. That's why she threw me out. Oh. Uh, she told me I looked just like my father. What? That's ridiculous. That's why she threw me out. Stupid. That doesn't make any sense. That's not really good. That's really stupid. And that's kind of why I'm still used to just living the life of pain. <gasps> That's horrible. Wow. 
Your 10th house is in Pisces, which means you will express that on camera. And what the hell? Was I even coming this one right on my display? It is, okay. Neptune in Sagittarius in philosophy, the view of God. Um, shoot my mom in the head right now. What? That would probably be a relief just to say that you know because she's in pain too and she doesn't know how to take care of you because of herself. Your whole purpose is to be a public speaker and communicate to Gemini and use your hands and arms and kisses. Well, she, she doesn't even know me. In your first house of who you are aggressively. And Venus is there conjunct it with your moon, your mom. In relationships with others that you love. Your Lilith is an Aquarius. That means you have multiple orgasms. <laughs> but I said to everyone who has Lilith and Aquarius, and most Leos do, and it's like it's in the eleventh house where you rebel with your friends or as your friends. I don't know. I understand that I live in pain and all this things need to be addressed all the time. Our pain needs not to be addressed. So that to those vices and our insecurities, they're valuable, I suppose, because we have Taurus there, so we think that that's a valuable place. Taurus is a value. <laughs> and that's your soul. But that's where I'm looking for people who have to go through Fox but you wasn't in Fox This is a whole different situation in your chart. And you're living and no one else does. I can't tell you no otherwise. Your eighth house is in Capricorn, which means you're going to die of happily old age. So get ready for that. I'll see you in the freaking future. Uh, the nursing homes or something or another rehab. Or I will never be in a nursing home. As if. But if you have to go there, you don't have Saturn and Aquarius. You don't have anything in Aquarius. What do you have in Aquarius? I thought you had anything. Ninth house is Aquarius. So you are philosophy thinks like me as Aquarius. Aquarius. This kind of stuff, our philosophy, the view of God. That is so cool. I wonder what it is, if there's any planets in there. It's a 1X, and I don't see any 1Xs. No planets are in there, but you're still it's still there like that. Yeah, yeah. Being a good friend of her freaking girl. Uranus in the one. Sixth house. Everyday, unusual, everyday uh, routines and unusual health problems or diets or something you're on. Who knows? I mean, you have to be unusual to be in the or something. Or unusual to survive in the moon. Or who knows? Well, I had to survive in the moon for my own thing. Right. Wow. And your life house is survival with your friends. I didn't survive. Your purpose is to do this. It's, it's, yeah, you don't. And you lacked it. That's what it says in here. The whole thing about surviving is you're lacking it, but it's your purpose to do it. And you came here to get it done. But it can leave your purpose the whole entire time. <laughs> it doesn't know how long. It has no um, purpose. doesn't seem to have any end or anything like that to it. <laughs> it just keeps becoming purpose. <laughs> Your Pluto is in Libra, which means you isolate yourself with other people to isolate yourself. Or maybe you're by yourself. You like to take someone with you. You want to be alone. You're with somebody. Is that right? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just hard to be alone. Yeah. But I do like some company, though. In there. <laughs> Me too. But Pluto and Libra means you always isolate yourself with a partner to bond with them. In the fifth house, through fun things, pleasures, and parties and with your mate Libra your heart's supposed to be beautiful because you have Libra there and your friends your spirit is supposed to be beautiful because you have 12 house Taurus I have that too I'm going and you have six house Scorpio your relationship with animals well your Mars is in Taurus that's how you get mad you don't want to eliminate the pleasure in life so you don't really get mad really quick you just get nitpick 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 nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. You don't want to disturb any feathers, but if they do, then you become the bull and the powerfulest motherfucker of all, and everyone wishes they were not doing that to you. <laughs> if they pissed you off, with whatever reason pisses you off, whatever it does. But that's a good placement to stop yourself from being a fucking retard, because I have Mars and Aries, and I will act. On that, and uh, just a third house deal with dramatic expression, overreact if I have to, and then I'll figure out what I gotta do to 
pick this myself up afterwards, after I pick myself up. But I'm not trying to be irrational about anything. So we get to the point of it. <laughs> Whatever. But I try to act like I'm Mars and Doors and it's and I have the patience for that. Even though I do have the patience, but why should it be for that? I mean, it's not on told. Goodbye, bitch. <laughs> for anybody, but I'm just like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, then, that was wonderful. Okay, let's see where your sea rest is. How you heal other people, Mr. Angel. You heal other people with your friendship and understanding and knowledge. With your knowledge. And this Aquarius, actually you have Cirrus and Aquarius. Wow, that's how you feel. That what people come to you for is to, to fit in with you that and you make you feel maybe you pretend you are like a fucking outcast or something. They are uh, comforted by that because your Cirrus is like that. And then your crowns and Taurus, the way you heal yourself is artificial with things and food and whatever and possessions. I have no clue. Same ability and losing your ego. You have to heal your ego at the same time because crowns and your ego sign, Taurus. And then, like, but Cirrus is in the ego, Aquarius, so you heal other people's ego, I suppose. And, like, what is the age sign? Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah? But I thought you could be in the wrong astral sign. Things that I should not have ever had to say. Yeah. And my pain. Yes. That I should not have relived. But, you know, people know me by that. They know me by Joker, <laughs> for a reason. The clown always smiles. He can do his thing, you know? Uh -huh. At least you're not feeling so pathetic. Mm -hmm. You can actually feel it. Mm -hmm. huh? Even Tauruses are kind of like, they want to be a social bath and they want to go to hell for some reason and be punished for nothing, whatever, unless they think they're evil enough to be restrained by evil powers, but they think they're like better than that and they could control them or something. But I don't know, whatever. And plus... I have no clue why in the four-faced being. Have you ever heard about the four-faced beings anyways? Yes. Please, let's go to the next clip and talk all about it. I guess you're Aries, you, you, you rule the self. Um, Libra is your polarity. They meet the needs of others. They're about relationships and bonding. But you're about, like, you know who you are. You are the I am and the identity. It's the first. It's the childlike one, too. And, um, but it's like the hero and some, so the first person to react to things, you rule reactions, you re rule people's persona, like how they view you, like right away, how you acquaint others. It's like a now or never now mentality. You, you're the only sign that knows how to live in the moment and create a moment for other people to live in. You're the only one that knows how to do that. <laughs> and you're the only one that has act the most action. Like you're not lazy. You'll, you'll be very athletic and stuff, gymnastic kind of person. Does that make any sense? <laughs> You'll be more tomboyish too because it's very masculine oh, yes, too. Yes. Like sports and stuff, I, I, you'll be into all. Your friends are the guys. Yeah, I never. Yeah. I'm not friends. I'm not friends that well with girls. Yeah, so you'd be more you know, um, related to the guys, and that's fun too. Yeah. <laughs> and sporting and running around on the playground. And you know, yeah, like that, just like that, and um, have quick energy, have a quick temper, and uh, react quickly. That's just you just need to explode, but you want to get to the heart of matters. What's going on? You know, just too impatient. It's that Aries kind of thing. It's really fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you go, yeah. And you, it's, it's about war. So you'll be like a warrior princess and stuff. <laughs> Bomb. Bomb. Yeah, like her. Like a freaking hero. That's what Aries represents. The accomplishments being competitive as well. Is it Aries? Yeah. Y'all are competitive. And you, and like, you're not afraid to tell people what, to, what you want to say because, um, you're like in their face and repulsive about it. Maybe you'll be like, um, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, Very competitive with games, don't you? Yes, even especially the game of life. <laughs> My game's groovy. Okay, let's get it. Hold on. Never remember. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you were a little kid? Uh, yes. When you were a baby? Can you remember that I bar? Back, can you remember? I could be. Re I remember, I remember in the crib. I remember oh, when I, I was not. like. I, I, I remember when I'm like four years old. Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't have any memories until I was like I six. Have, I have oh. like. I have like some little memories, like I, I remember being, I remember um, sitting in a corner in the back of my house, Wow. 
And I also remember me getting bitten by a dog in my house. Oh, that well that's sense. traumatizing. That'd be something to remember. But you're not scarred now, are you? Nope. Well, that's good. It's not sad anymore. Yeah, your sixth For house. Some reason, I feel like I'm I can't wait. The Yay! Like wild thornberries. Mm -hmm. I make lots of stranger friends, but also I make yeah. lots of like animal friends. I'm gonna tell you about your friends on here too. I'm gonna tell you all kinds about your relationship with animals because you have the time of birth, and we can find that out through your. Yeah, actual... get more information. This is how it goes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Here it is. Um. You have you're an Aries, and your moon is an Aries, so your father put you into sports and everything like that, and helped you with that, right? And he was aggressive with you. Okay, your Saturn is in Virgo, which means your mother is kind of critical of you. She taught you how to do day-to-day -day routines and chores, and she, you have a problem with that. And maybe you have and you have to have an asthma inhaler or allergies in your life, and you have a you know strict diet because. I'm allergic to and yes, chores. And um, you have to, you're very perfectionist and OCD and everything, but it kind of restricts you on doing this. And you're supposed to be pure-minded and all this good stuff, like you could be the best skeptic and everything, and you could be a very good psychologist, but they could take it away from you too as well. Maybe your mother was your accountant, she helps you with your math and stuff. And um, your Mercury is in Taurus already, so you already know how to do math probably, and you know how you have a powerful voice and a beautiful voice because Venus is ruled by Taurus and Libra. Your Mercury is in Taurus, and that's how you think and communicate, like talk. And it's in, and your Mercury is in, you could have a good singing voice. It's in the, um, one so, X. Aunt, Ma Aunt Mary um, helped you with um, chores and stuff and made sure that you keep on track yes. and everything. And you're very organized and everything because yeah. of that. Yeah. And maybe you'd be like a good detective because you're good at picking up stuff like that. Oh, yes. And then um, also, yes. uh, what was the next part? I forgot. Oh, the singing. Yes. yes. And Beautiful then also, you're a really good singer. I am. From your birth? I'm, I'm already a known so it's basically true. I'm so excited for that. And your third house is Libra. That's another beautiful placement. You'll have even more of a beautiful voice because when you talk. And when you wake up, you're about others. But when you're going to bed, you're all about yourself. And you're like, I want to be alone. And then when you wake up, I don't want to be alone anymore. Because your third house is how you wake up and it's your hands and how you publish and write stories. You'll probably write stories about love and stuff your marriage. You're, Vir you're Virgo rising so you can be the best publisher and writer. Do you think you're a very good writer? I'm probably good at grammar, being a grammar snob or something. <laughs> Are I you? I a lot of grammar and vocabulary. Sure. And, um... I love to read. Wow, okay. Here's something else. Your fourth house at home. Your mother's intense and, um, desirable and stuff like that. You're, you probably are very chaotic at home. And you're probably a rebellious person at home against something that's not even there. Just against yourself, but you wish your mother would be more um like disciplining on you or something which she already is because it's uh, virgo but i'm um... so but when you sometimes chaotic. Thank you. yeah you'll okay. you're, you'll be more chaotic at home than you are in public's eye in the public's eye like at work in your career you'll be really stable and 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 everyone else will seem chaotic to you but when you're at home you're the chaos instead of the one in the public's eye Isn't that weird and everyone will see you as beautiful too and what you're doing in your career will be beautiful and be relational you'll want everyone to work with you in your reputation. Like your your reputation is beautiful and stable and financially secure. Mm -hmm. So in your job you're gonna make lots of friends and be like you'll have a beautiful voice and be very you are clear, every, you, you're, crazy. Every, you're you're a mother to every one of your friends. You are mothering and nourishing and loyal because your eleventh house is in cancer. That's like her. She's a cancer. So you'll be like that to your friends and the social media and everything. It's the mother. It's the, mother. It's the emotionally intimate caring one. Um your 12th house is Leo, so you find your soul by doing plays and stuff and creative projects. I, I always wanted to go to an opera or something. And also, your moon is also in the 8th house, so you might have a, your mother might be dead, but she's not. And she might, you might inherit some government property through her or something. Your 8th house is in Pisces, this is your death house, this is how everyone dies, the 8th house is an expression of that. And it's in Pisces, so you might drown, or you might be drugged, or you might have, commit suicide, don't even try these things out. But it might be something like that in Pisces. Pisces rules that. So well, sometimes you, you might be like really sad. And have you might have that darkness and despair, and you'll become a Pisces spiritual person. 
And when you're like no, desperate, when you're desperate in darkness and despair, you'll you'll act as a Pisces, a chameleon. Your six houses, you act like a Pisces, which you're a compassionate, loving, creative person with your imagine, living in your imagination every day with your animals because your animals rules Aquarius. You are a friend for, to animals. You're a true friend to animals. You treat them like, you know, human every all equally because your six houses in Aquarius, and that's how you are like every day. You're everyone's friend every day, and um, persistent friend. You want to know things and um. You have um, ninth house in Aries. That's your philosophy and stuff about yourself. Your the, who am I in the view of God? I am who I am in the view of God. Ninth house, like at church and stuff. You're more like your ego is there. Your moon's there. Your Virgo rising. Everyone thinks that you come off as perfectionist and smart and all this good stuff and organized. Um, but secretly, you keep on you keep on attracting all these people who are like Pisces because it's the seventh house. Everyone you attract is like desperate and like sad and um they're depressed and they're compassionate loving people you just keep on uh and you're like see them all is different from them like d different from you you're like i'm not that emotional and stuff but secretly you are in your shadow self like chameleons you'll attract people like me i'm a pisces and spiritual uh delusional people and you'll be like i don't not that delusional because i'm practical you come off as practical as a virgo rising yeah and deep down you are with other people Yeah, and that's how they'll, they'll, they'll come off to you, and you'll be like, that's so different for me. You won't think that you're the same as them whenever they're being emotional. Yeah. Whenever Aiden gets all emotional, and you might think that, oh, I'm not like that, but then you actually are. I, I really am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think that he's not emotional at all, but I know that I'm emotional. Yeah. Okay. And, um... <laughs> yeah. Sounds like you've got it. Yeah, I'm very forgiving too. Is um, Pisces things, um, and like Jesus complex kind of thing. What would Jesus choose? Whatever, <laughs> um, etc. Creative and imaginative. Okay, I had to redo that. Um, here it is. Um, but it's kind of like your philosophy stops at a certain age, like as a child, and then. You don't move on to any other philosophy. It's always about the same white because it's just an Aries. <laughs> they're kind of like the first thought, and they're like, I'm just going to deal with that. First thought, oh well. Yeah, and so move the on. Thing that you were when you're young is what you'll be forever. So you were like, how you, you know, think, like you were, their view of things and your philosophy. The way you look at the world. So, who knows? <sighs> you are, and your son is in the, in the V11 slot. Um, V11, what is that? Numerology. V11, okay. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Oh, and you keep on uh, attracting people that are like your mom. The moon is in um, your moon. Oh my god, it was in Aries. And it's also in the house of the seventh house. So your mom kind of treats you like an inevitable object, kind of like fake sometimes she is. And it also makes you a little bit embarrassed of ridiculous things. Be like, you're not going to wear that around me, are you? But that's how your mother probably was. <laughs> and then it kind of makes you like that in a way, or you're kind of opposite from that. You're opposite from your mother, but you keep on attracting all these people like your mother. <laughs> and you're secretly like your mother. Because it's in your shadow self. Isn't that funny? <laughs> You'll attract people like it. You'll think those different. <laughs> your Saturn in the first house, you probably put stress on, on knowing who you are. Your dad probably gave you a false identity of your, yourself, too. And like didn't know who you are and but it helps you know who you are because like you know you're in a sports and stuff she helps you with that probably more than your mom i don't know <laughs> my mom's not really into sports she's just into right so, so your dad helped you figure that sort of stuff so right? your mom's more spiritual she rather she shows you unconditional love but she rather not take responsibility for you and like make you into a foster care or something she's been taken care of by other people and she probably rather be just delusional and do drugs or something and don't sort of take responsibility of you who knows what she does she probably drinks or something and she shouldn't be doing that i think it probably is work what she's addicted to exactly yeah, she, she really is addicted to work because mm -hmm. once i go to sleep oh, she's addicted to work? And, I, and i want and i want her to sleep like right next to me or something mm -hmm. oh. she has always... like a little nap or something yep. she just does her homework even now she's always at her computer in their little office I know, it's so tiny! I know, she's always, she's always at the same, every time I go over too. Yeah, 
she's, crazy. She's always at the desk. So because of that, she loves you a lot and she tries to help you, but she's not really, she also doesn't maybe take care of you as much as your dad. You're also Venus's, your Sometimes Venus. These are a little off. It, I am off, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Okay, your Venus, it is. Like, this is not 100,000% true. This mm -hmm. is just my own analysis. It has nothing to do with everybody else's yeah, perspective. Okay. It could match. But, well, Sometimes um, it works your Venus is in Taurus, so you're looking for somebody who is financially secure, and you're the financially secure one, you're the breadwinner, or whatever. Your Mars is in Leo, so when you get mad or angry, you do kind of petty things to other people, and you can also cause drama. <laughs> <laughs> And you're the <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that one's true, babe. Yeah, like that's funny. <laughs> Sometimes you're the big dramatic one of the friendship. Your Jupiter's in Pisces. Whenever you um, point out anything spiritual, you become successful at it, like being psychic and stuff, and being chameleon to others, like seeing through other people's BS. You know, you can be very psychic with that. It's, you can see spirits through other people, but you—it's a challenge because you have to get them to listen to you. You know what I mean? But they'll listen to you because your voice is so beautiful. So you could be a singer or something. Oh, yeah. Your 10th house is in Gemini. You're more talkative on the public side as well. Your fourth house at home can be um, Sagittarius. You're really well known at home or something. I have no clue. You travel a lot. I have no clue. I think I'm messing up on this. Mm -hmm. okay. I think a lot of things you haven't quite had time to like, travel and stuff. So, But you do I've really want to travel in the future. It's just that not that far. Okay. Right? Never mind. I got the wrong... Uh, uh, she she does plan chart. the travel. Okay. You're gonna do an exchange here still, it right? Really is okay. Well, hopefully that was okay. It's because I got some of it right, some of it just I I'm had to sure change it. Right, <laughs> I think the majority of it was pretty good. What about yours? <laughs> Mine was like mostly right. I was pretty impressed. I've heard yeah. I've heard multiple of these because like I sent my friends into them. And really? That one was like one of the closest on like like across the board sort of thing, you know? Oh, thank you. I, so I think that was pretty good. Thank you. That's so cool. Time that we're at the park, What's though? your a testimony of God and your experience with spirits that you've seen? Okay, so mine was when I was a child. Um, it's <laughs> it's a little bit weird. So <laughs> when I would go to sleep, I would see this. Originally, it was like an old man, mm -hmm. and it was kind of maybe like a Native American man, you know, something like that. And he would sit on. I had like this little Girl Scout bucket thing in my room because I was a Girl Scout and we would go wow. camping with it but wow. he would sit there and he would watch me as I went to sleep mm -hmm. and I don't know I just never was scared of him or anything I just was like oh he's what he's making sure I'm okay and then eventually um it was like two times that he brought a younger boy that was about my age wow. there and then eventually it was only the boy huh. and then I don't know years went by I don't remember when but eventually it just kind of stopped oh. and then I I, one time, like a couple years ago, I told my mom about it, mm -hmm. and my mom said that she had the same thing, but a Native oh. American girl, and that my great grandmother also had a Native American girl that would watch over her. Wow. Mm -hmm. While they sleep, and that and it was only when they were little, and they were never really scared of them or anything. And I don't know. I always thought, you know, like I made it up or like something like that. And then I talked to my mom about that once. And she was like, yeah, that exact same thing. And was telling her story. And I was like, identical. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. That's so amazing. Corby. So. Your spiritual story. My spiritual story. My spiritual story was about, like, so I, when it was nighttime, I would always go to sleep in my room. But back then, I used to have, like, these bunks. And. Sometimes when I would wake up in the middle of the night and go around in my room and just look for something interesting to get me to sleep, mm -hmm. I would just see some spirits that would just come and, like, watch me. And wow. I, I will stand there for a second and just go, like, who cares, and then just turn on the lights, and then they're just gone for a second. But once I look into more of the house... I see, like, another one somewhere around there. Another one? Yeah. <laughs> what do they look like well, to you? Well, I, I don't see that much. I, I don't see their perspective of what they look like. Uh -huh. But to me, they just look like shadows of people, but the people were not there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, so you can only see, like, their outline? The shadow people? Yeah. There is shadow people that exist. Or just the outline, like a ghost without a fig without the, like a hollow inside or something an yeah, outline it's okay i i was i'm not scared of them for a sec so i just 
then mm-hmm. go and turn on the lights sometimes and just turn them back off and don't go to sleep. <laughs> don't go to sleep? <laughs> you can. Yeah. Wow. Well, just stay in line just as best you can. And, well, I it's been doing that for a couple of months and then it stopped. Mm-hmm. When I was like seven, maybe. Mm-hmm. Wow. Children have a I never scream, I just scream in my head. <laughs> yeah, because it's physical, really. So. No. The only thing is, you just have to focus on the light and try to ignore those dark beings so they won't get to your light energy and like make you have headaches and stuff. And call out to Jesus if you can, if he's there. If he doesn't come, then you're on your own with that light. <laughs> and there might be other spirits that are good Samaritans enough to surround you with their light to protect you in this little know. universe of I, I just void and light. And the, light just to turn it off and off. the physical light? Yeah. With their spiritual light. Yeah. <laughs> you meant, you were like inside of your I spirit. Yeah. Okay. So, it's free to be innocent and stay light. Innocence. <laughs> yes, it's pure and good. Okay, like, have you ever seen the four-faced being or what? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Don't ask me. You know, four-faced thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Try to say what I'm talking about then. Explain to me what it looks like. The four-faced thing. Yeah. You got sadness, regret, mm-hmm. yeah. pain, mm-hmm. and sorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. I understand that. That's wonderful. <laughs> they they are. all four faces, trust me. No, I'm talking about the, this, this This is a legend that actually is some kind of Bible or some bullshit. But it's actually a real being. You know, like angels and stuff. Do you think angels are real? Even if they can't do much but comfort you, they can just come just as light and come to you and give you like some dark energy like demons. Do you think they actually exist too more than just like a human that's getting in your way? I know what I'm going to say. Uh huh, tell me about that. They don't want to be with you like we are. Yeah, but they're trying to influence you and you can. They want it. Two or something? Or what? They're fighting over you? Mm-hmm. No, they're not fighting over me. Mm-hmm. Why would they fight over a weak ass human? They've got well, too much better to do. Well that's they don't have anything better to do. Oh, they do. If they if they have a chance. They can't no one no human is communicating. Most humans aren't even psychic enough to get See, a thought. This is what I've told my mom. That's why you every single time she told me Bible stories when I was a kid. We got it. She was sitting there and telling me, oh. Well, those are rumors. <laughs> you know, angels and demons oh, yeah. envy us. And okay. I was like, why the fuck would they envy us? Oh, well, I would, I would too. I would too. Because if you're an angel, you're, you're in spirit. You're not a physical being. Okay. We are physical. That's the thing. We die. We will have spirit again. Exactly. We'll go back into that. But we still die. Nothing is so much better. And we don't. They don't, because they are still in spirit. They've always been in spirit. They never were physical. It's what we thought, is what I've heard. I guess I'm not, no angels told me the truth yet, but I have seen them, and I know what they look like. They're really pretty. They look all so much the same, kind of. They're like, people say they don't have free will. But when you're doing psychic ability and re- relaying a message, you don't have free will, but to do that, I have no clue. But then again, if we don't have free will, we can... I don't know. But, uh... So have you seen what angels look like? What do they look like to you? To me, I'll tell you. They look, I've already said, I've got it on video, so I don't have to repeat it, but I will repeat it after you tell me your visions of angels. Like the ones that are dead, not the people. Well, the only dead. thing I can tell you about an angel is my father. Okay, well, he doesn't have wings, so he can be in spirit, actually. <laughs> I'm just so. saying, the way that I've seen him at his grave. At his grave? When I went and visited his grave after that fucking cemetery, ran over his fucking plaque mm-hmm. with a fucking lawnmower. Just killed his fucking plaque. That's all I had left. You know, oh. we couldn't afford a fucking tombstone. Oh. Mm-hmm. We can only afford a plaque. Okay. Well, what happened to him? He was cremated? And I went there. No. He was buried in the ground. Oh, okay. Oh, but that was just a plaque. Well, that was cool, too. But I went there to go visit him. And all I know is I was going through a lot of sadness. Mm-hmm. Just like I'm going through now. Right. 
and he sat there and he told me, smile, be happy, don't let these motherfuckers take you down, smile on the face of your enemies, it's what you've always got to do, just like I told you at my open casket, smile. I don't want to smile and cause wrinkles, but you don't have any, so you can be lucky with that. <laughs> and you look good smiling, so. Nice, um, I just, like, that doesn't mean that he was talking for God. He was talking for him, from himself and his own perspective. His spirits and spirit that are humans, they don't know anything other than what they've known and been now. Right? They don't, they're not any different than when they were alive, but they are, because they're the same thing, and what did they know about now? Unless they all know smash with that too, and it's like their ability, because they have to, because that's all they are, is the light, so they have to see the light, and of course you see it. What it tells, because it, there's time here, we have time, and we're no time, man, that's no space, nothing, for some weird insane reason that we're still, like, when we're already after objecting or something, sometimes. Or whenever we have to do that in reality, I don't even really know. Whatever sucks to go outside your body, but maybe reincarnation can be real because the animals talking about reincarnation, so that's what we can look forward to. But they go back to the same owner over and over and over, so they're so loyal then, or is that just like a trap? I don't know. It's a crazy fucking trap. Well, it sounds good to me. Same old spirit reincarnating back too through their animals. Well, how are they manifested as the same? Well, just like in. We go back to what we love, like the cancer, the past. I don't know. That makes sense. <laughs> wow. Well, that's sweet of them. <laughs> well, they shouldn't do because they're the spiritual animals. They have to just look out and look up. Like the dogs? Or right. the spirit world? Like, what do you have? <laughs> Not the dogs, I'm just talking about the people. You know, the yes. animals. They wouldn't treat us better. Um, some, yeah. some, and some. They're all different too. They're all different. Feral, see, different. Animals have compassion. Maybe Humans, we have a little bit, just a little bit. Oh yes, definitely that compassion card on the tip of Pisces world. This is the actual. To see spirits, let's communicate with spirits. What do you think? What do you see right now? It's spirits. What? That's the a heart. The heartless symbol. And what does it mean to you? A heartless? Like you don't have a heart anymore because you're ripped out or something? No, it was ripped out <laughs> when my father left me. When he died. How old are you when you're 13? Six, you said? What? I was six when it left me, but I got this when I was 13. What do you mean you got? When you were 13, you got that? Wow, that's cool. My so refreshed. father gave it to me. Or not my father, but my brother. My brother I had a tattoo for him. Whoa. When you were only 13? He did my garage. Yes. Well. And I bled for three days. And had to bite down on the fucking rag because it hurt so much. That was that's a pretty big one, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've also got a crow on my back. A what? Let me see. It's not colored in, but. Wow, it's an eagle or something. A crow, you crow. say? It's a crow with six or six on it? Oh, a bird. Yeah, but why is that? It's like a phoenix crow. And Twenty. Two number two would be your number then for that in numerology, I think. Well the reason why I got the two six six tattoo is because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because it's punk rock. No, because I hurt somebody. What did you hurt? What do you mean? What do you mean why? Why? Hurt somebody because I'm trying to be dangerous. Or something? Take over the car while it's going to I didn't them. kill them. I just wished they would have died. Right. I've got a smile on their face. They hate me. 
Is she still your girlfriend? No, not this point. She's got a new baby daddy right now. It works. You know, it's fine. I make my way through my pain. I always know quite how to get there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Cool. No, that's a shitty one. No, it's not. It's it so is. cute. No, it's shitty. What's this one? This one? Is that one? It's a smiley face. Ah ha 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 ha. Yes. And, and I'm sure that was very laughable to say because it was. Oh yes, this is pretty. I remember what kind this of one. Is who I am. I remember that one. Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs> Fine. You can change it to anything you want. It's kind of like a spider, isn't it? It's one of the first ones I got, but it was mushroom head. It's a band. Yeah. A metal band. What is they that fucked it up. What is a creature supposed to be? It was supposed to be a mask, but they turned it into a fucking spider. Or what? It looks like a spider mask, too. It looks like a, one of those things yeah. that could change into different things. Different faces and has four eyes. But also, look at this one as well. Fuck it. Hungry. Hungry Biot. I got that for my fat ass. It's sister. supposed to be Happy Meal, right? Yep. I love Happy Meal. Oh goddamn! You knew that. I never knew Nobody that. Nobody else knew that. It looks like you're the should... only one that called it for what it was. Wow. Hungry Biatch. It's a Happy Meal box. Yeah. And I got that for I my love fat ass sister. She's three hundred pounds. I'll Bitch call her sat in. on me <laughs> when I was a little kid. Cute. She almost choked the life out of me. What's her story sign? She is Aries. Okay. Rubies. I'm being truthful. Why would you ever think that? Not that. <laughs> Why would you ever think you were born? I guess the colors there were so sweet. I don't know. I guess I was being. I thought I was born, so I could have accused myself of being born too. I'm not sure. Or maybe right now, I'm not doing my best of performance. I feel like I should be. Or I want to be in a different mood and appear. I don't know, because yesterday was so cool. Wow. I'm going to watch this one shit YouTuber. She's so cool. After I show you this. La Vida. I mean, there's so many cool people to watch. And then some people I know. I don't really get why there's... Why is there so many people? <laughs> It's fine to practice on people, but why do you have to make donations to practice to get you to be better at it or something? Is it a little starving? Is there something else that you can do in your despair is thinking that that's how you feel? And you need to go off and panhandle for money or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you have done it. I haven't went that far. Oh, really? Why not? You would be very good at it. I would never hold a sign out to the side of the street. A new sign. Okay, well, I, I would, maybe. I, I need help. Well, tell me. Go ahead. Tell me. Listen. I'm a gypsy joker. Yes. I've got gypsies in my blood. I had a dream about somebody when I was in the last crazy hospital. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Her name was Leia. Mm -mm. And then she got out two days before I did. Mm -hmm. She got back on the meth. Mm -mm. And I was still sitting there in the crazy hospital. Mm -hmm. Two days later, calling her on the patient phones, yeah. trying to figure out where the fuck she was. Awesome. And she told me, Oh, well, I'm out here getting fucking high right now. And I was like, Well, bring your ass back home. Uh huh. And then what did you think she'd do? Nothing. <laughs> That's just what you thought she would do. <laughs> well, we we went through some shit. Mm -hmm. She came back. Yes. I got her back there. To the psych ward to quit for good. What did they do? She just wanted to break her habit. I don't um, know. That's not worth it. That's the devil. Fuck. If y'all know ward, demons, they're real. The psych ward doesn't work. No. 
Well, that doesn't either, because it makes you rebel and be like, you're not wanting to be nothing like it. You don't know who you are. You're saying what you are and what you've done. And some places you think you're getting punished for them. But that's a good place to put them, too, in, like, your real life. If anywhere, just because they're away from things that are going to poison them, like, hurt themselves. That's all they want is not to hurt themselves. Well, I just had a dream that she overdosed. Do something that's not born. Oh, yeah, what the fuck happened after that? Really? You got her back, then. Yeah, but what happened to her after you had that nightmare? Did it come true? She did overdose, but she came back. Yeah, your eyes are so hypnotizingly insane. One of them goes like this, and this one like that, and it makes me feel like I'm doing the same thing. It makes me feel like it can open and close my eyeballs. Like, blue-eyed people, they have weird googly things, like one people is bigger than the other sometimes, and it's a real thing for all these blue-eyed people are sometimes. Do you know anything you know what all that stuff's called? We do. <laughs> Just peopleness. People, people image. Mm -hmm. Well, my father called me Fender. They're so amazed balls. Like, you can hypnotize people with it. And they're so wonderful, beautiful. I wonder what your moon sign is. Taurus already rules beauty. So you are part of Venus. You're part of beauty and financial security. And you are so cool. Your moon sign is probably Aquarius or Leo. I think something like that. But you would be really, really friendly and persistent. Just letting you know when you just drink. If you were moon in Aquarius. <laughs> As a Taurus. Whoa. That's cool. That's cool. Yes. <laughs> well, and it owns this particular world, but then again. There's nothing to believe in. Ooh. Everything's possible. There's one thing left to believe in. Yourself. That's it. And no. What? Insanity. It's true. That's true. That is Crazy real. Mess. We were there when everything, like, split, you know, like, into dark and light or whatever in our minds inside. That's what happened to me. Actually, outrageously, when you were insane, and you call it, once you get to that philosophy, you call it insane. Oh my god, I'm insane. You know what I mean? And it's an experience, like... Spiritual and mental, like nutcase-ish. When your mind splits, you know, when you when you go through adolescence, and I don't know, like when you end up being seventeen, and that's when everything splits. Or did you? Do you know what I'm talking about? You do that like before. Right before then. Mm -hmm. But it's contagious too. Everyone around you does the same thing when you do it. Does it seem like it was everyone? Like, went insane, like your mind just splits. Is that, and that's what it feels like, right? Nobody around me did it. Oh. I just went through that myself. Right. And they didn't even know. Did it make you cry and laugh at us and tell all that good stuff? Which, hysteri being well, hysterical, anyways, can honestly, happen with a lot of this experience. I did cry mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I found I couldn't do that anymore after a while. Mm hmm. I got so mad and happy at the same time. Yeah. You know, I was going back and forth between happiness and sadness. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find a way just to make it. But at the end of the day, the happiness. One? You know, I still remember the sadness. Uh -huh. I mean, I've always got my mind at the end of every day. Mm hmm. Sometimes I always laugh about it and I don't fucking get it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna find why. humor everywhere. <laughs> Death. Everyone is the best medicine. Very true. Very true. Very true. Sometimes the serious best medicine to get to be happy. Living at peace or something. 